Okay, you want to speed up Hearts of Iron 4. You've heard all the old mundane advice a thousand times before. I'm going to tell you the three things in every single game of Hearts of Iron 4 I do to speed up the game. Now, if you want a more in-depth guide to improving the speed, give this video a try. See this one on the top right? It breaks down some of the more, more basic stuff, where in this video, I feel like it's the stuff that's like a little bit less well-known. Anyway, without further ado, Here's Boyer with 5k hours and 200 plus k subscribers on YouTube. Hoi for Boyos. What he does to make the game run significantly faster. Without further ado, Hearts of Iron 4. I run a mod in about 90% of my games. And that mod is called the Spot Optimization Mod, but it works. So, little backstory, the MP boyos run a spot mod, and this has loads of extra features, plus multiplayer optimization. Now, if you ever played the spot mod multiplayer, you know how great it is. This game runs super silky smooth. And here it is. The only difference is, is it doesn't make any actual functional change to the game itself. However, it includes the optimizations. If you want the original mod, I believe it's this one. Oh, there's another one here. AI Shackles. Solving late game lags since 2020. Well, guys, it might be four things we try. I think we might have to subscribe to this one as well. AI Shackles is a simple mod. It limits the ability for minor nations without any relevance to the war, like El Salvador, to produce equipment and field massive armies. These useless armies are a great portion of why the game crawls to a halt late game. Wow, guys. So it's no longer three, it's four, okay? I'll be using this mod from now on. One thing I think is important about these four, three things I'm showing here is I feel like these should be implemented in some way as a part of the option in a normal game of Hoi 4. It kind of annoys me that these make such a fundamentally massive improvement to the game speed, but there aren't options that toggleable in Hoi 4 so you can take advantage of it, which I feel is just a little bit frustrating. Anyway, first of all, you can include this. It looks like this one, though, does have extra features, which you kind of want the vanilla experience. This mod originally featured it. Oh, so it doesn't feature it anymore. So just to take the steps, initially MP guys want optimization. They designed the spot mod. This also includes lots of extra features for MP that people prefer. Ways of balancing the game, for instance, and modifying the map to, to make a more competitive multiplayer experience. But it turns out that it made massive difference to the overall performance. So they've stripped out all the MP extra features and then we're left with AI shackles and also the spot optimization mod, which just improves the game speed. And here is the breakdown. So the speed slowdown from lag is changed to wait for 30 days. Okay. Pause from lag is changed to 18 days. If someone lags into oblivion, the game will pause itself instead of slowing down. Okay. Game speed constants change to lower values, namely to these ones from these ones. This allows the in-game to run faster. So be aware, when we say faster... We're not necessarily saying more frames per second because when you go five speed in Hoi 4, it is going as fast as your PC can run. And a lot of the time it'll drop your FP FPS down, even if you've got a God PC or a crappy old toaster. At the end of the game, when I'm talking about speed, I'm referring to how quickly the in-game time runs. Because a lot of the time in Hoi 4, particularly between 1936 and 1939, you're just kind of waiting around, waiting for the date to go up, wait for the research to complete, production to be complete. And that is kind of where, when we talk about optimization, where we're getting a, a faster game experience. However, some of these changes will also increase your FPS as well. Change to MappyCon group passes. Once again, more in-game backend code. Event process offset change as well. Trust me on this one, guys. This mod makes a massive difference to the overall speed of the game. So I would highly recommend running this mod in the background in a normal vanilla game. Here's the big but. The changes I'm going to tell you about today, unfortunately, will not work in Iron Man. They'll make a fantastic multiplayer experience for you and your friends. But unfortunately, if you're looking to get achievements, you're probably better off just playing normal vanilla anyway. Hence the reason why I like these to be a part of a normal Hoi 4 experience. Okay, so playlist. AI shackles. Enabled. And also spot optimization mod. But it works. Let's hop on in. I've said it. But I'll say it again. The optimizations I'm showing today will not work in Iron Man, so you not get the ability to get achievements. I know that's disappointing, but it is what it is, okay? Here we go. Hoi 4 game, title screen, single player, new game, 936 Germany. Let's go. 
So first of all, if you're using AI shackles, you've got the option whether you want to do this or not do this. As you can see, these are the countries that have less of an impact overall in the game. So these will be the penalties that apply to those said nations. Oh, damn. Look at the bottom there, guys. Denmark. I'm so sorry, Denmark. <laughs> Your role in World War II, very small it may have been, uh, has now become even smaller. I'm so sorry. And if we go five speed now and you look at the timer in the top right, as you can see, a day is significantly shorter than it would normally be. Anyway, pause. So we need to hit the teal key now, which is above the tab key and to the left of the one key and below the escape here, hit teal and the console is here. So when I start any Hoi 4 game, I will always open the console and do these two commands. And I've noticed they're quite effective in increasing the overall game speed, which is a day duration in Hoi 4. The first one, which is a little bit controversial, I will admit, is weather. You press this, you notice the map changes slightly. Boom. You see there's like a slight filter that's over the top. You just have to find that if you look around the world, let's say if I turn on debug mode, all around the world, the game is calculating temperatures. So if you look really closely here, like I've turned the weather on, you can see, can you this temperature change? Can you see that? So it's constantly increasing the temperatures, decreasing the temperatures, calculating amounts of rain and snow. Now, my understanding is these are like back-end features that were like implemented in the beginning of Hoi 4, but never really fully functional as a part of a normal game. As you can see, every single day that goes by, every single province in the entirety of the game recalculates the change of weather and snow amounts and rain amounts, even in Africa. That's right, we're looking for snow in Africa, boys. With that in mind, though, it will affect normal weather actual ones that make an actual real impact on actual combat so for instance let's go somewhere into the ocean popular place for storms you can see here there's arctic wind water heather if i turn off the weather it will also disable that attribute in these zones so you could say in some way this is kind of a cheat because this will buff your air force but i suppose it works for both sides really because both sides are going to be suffering from the penalties you will experience from bad weather so it depends how you look at it really example for instance it's usually a really good idea to push into egypt north africa in this region when there's a sandstorm happening which does happen quite frequently and the reason for that is if you've not got a strong air force you kind of ignore most of the air that's defending that said region if you turn the weather off pushing into egypt might be a little bit more difficult due to air always being it's a hundred percent power but once again it can work both ways because if you've got a strong air force you'll take advantage of the bonuses but for instance not have to take advantage of the bad weather penalties so it works both ways but overall from my experience as you can see from spite five speed here turning the weather off does make an overall big difference another one that makes a big difference is a very classy one it's debug underscore smooth can you see that in the console right there can you see that right there boom debug smooth i am only going to give you a short version of what i think this is doing and i've been given an explanation but it's fallen out of my head once again not a coder don't understand how optimization works in games, so I'm just going to give you the layman's version. Most of the time, the CPU and GPU are trying to catch each other, and they will always try and be in sync with each other with the visuals that you see and the calculations happened in-game. When you turn off Debug Smooth, it allows the, the game time to be faster than what the visuals are actually showing. It's almost like the CPU and GPU trying to become in sync with one another. Now, as a pro side, that the game speed will run faster, a day will be shorter. However, the downside is when the game becomes significantly laggy in a late game scenario, you may experience like this extreme stutter when you are playing a normal game. I notice it quite frequently in the 1940s when I'm like panning and debug smooth turned off and there's like a very weird juttery effect, almost like it's drawing the lines on screen. If you can put up with that, that's totally cool because overall you're going to get a faster game experience and you might be able to play to the very end of Hoi 4. I mean, who does that, right? It allows you overall to experience more of the game, which who doesn't want to do that, really? I've also been told it's advisable to turn V-Sync off in that scenario as well. Play it by ear. Sometimes these settings might not work right for you, so it might be better in those circumstances to turn them off or turn them on, depending on your PC's hardware. I'm running a God Rig on my CPU GPU, so that might explain why these run a little bit better for me. But I have noticed some instances where I have had to turn Debug Smooth off super late game if it is getting really, really choppy. And in that case, it usually works out better to have it back on. Well, there you go, guys. There's the three kind of four changes. So just to cover AI shackles. Next one is the spot mod, just the optimization one. Next one, weather turning off. And final one is Debug Smooth. 
and I've been advised to turn VSync off if you're turning off Debug Smooth because that will help it even further. Once again, not big things, guys. All the time it comes down to the CPU power with Hoi4 because that's how a lot of the back-end calculations are calculated. But overall, guys, Hoi4 is quite a demanding game on your CPU, so... You might do all these changes, but a lot of the time you might have to upgrade your CPU. I know I said it. I know they're the forbidden words. Oh my God, buy a new computer. I know it sucks, but it is what it is. Guys, have fun. I do all these changes in my game, and this is what I do to get an overall faster new experience. Hey, more Hoi 4? Click right here. This is right up your alley. This one. Click it.